Well, how are you doing? <clears throat> okay, this is a video I really don't want to have to be making, and really I shouldn't have to be making it, but um, <clears throat> um, I kind of feel like I have no choice because I've tried to explain some of these things to people on the Troy Thinking server, what I call the Not Thinking server these days. Um, I've actually been over there a couple of times, maybe two or three times, trying to explain this to Bev and other people. <clears throat> and even the last time I was there, I did a presentation on it. Now, Bev has claimed that nobody's explaining it to him. Now, it's a bit strange considering I've been there a couple of times. So how could you claim nobody's explaining it to him? Um, I think it's more of a case of Bev is claiming no one's explaining it to him, but Bev actually just doesn't understand it and won't admit it. Or he's just straight out being dishonest. It's, a, it's only one or the other. Either way, it <coughs> doesn't matter. <clears throat> During this video, I'm going to try and just stick to three topics. Right, three things that they're not understanding on the try thinking, sorry, not thinking server. Um, what's happening over there is Bev has a closed mind for whatever reason. Um, he um, he tends to dismiss things, and then other people around him dismiss things, and he gets things wrong, and but people assume that he's right, and just follow his lead when he's wrong. But it really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to go through three things here that's going to point out three things that they've been sp talking about recently that are wrong. Um, Bev, as I said, claims that nobody try nobody explains it to him. No one will explain it to him. Um, you know, you, you, when someone does try and explain it to you, Bev, you have to actually pay attention and try and learn about what they're saying and not be dismissing of what they say when they're trying to explain it to you. This is not what you're seeing on the screen. Just for this one, this just one section. What you're seeing on the screen is not me. It's not Brian's logic. This is celestial navigation. This is what it's about. This is what how the process starts. Is what the process is. Okay. This is the flat Earth debate argument because it proves that sea level is horizontal. It proves the Earth has a horizontal baseline. Right? You would think that Bev would be interested in this, but obviously not. He's not interested in anything that's going to prove the very thing that he says he's trying to prove to the world or whatever uh, he's trying to say when it comes to uh, level being horizontal. That's what he's. That's what he's saying. He's trying to say that like that is true, right? No, I don't disagree with that. Level is horizontal, right? But this proves it on the large scale. Yet Bev wants to stick with water levels that are two hundred and three hundred meter as long of water level whereas you're talking t about thousands of miles of of the ocean being shown to be you know having a horizontal you know so the, the base level of the ocean the sea level of the ocean being shown to be horizontal so you would think that bev would be interested in something that would prove it right not only just that water levels are are, are, are on at all sizes are um are um, <clears throat> establishing a horizontal but that horizontal and level are the same thing you would think that he would be interested in something like that but he doesn't seem to be either way i'm going to do this video anyway <clears throat> i'm not going to be calling names so you can't dismiss this video on someone calling you a name i won't be shouting so you can't dismiss it on someone shouting i won't be saying anything that is going to involve uh, me attacking anyone personally on the Troy thinking, right? Not thinking server. I won't be doing that. Um, so there's no reason to dismiss it, right? You, if you're interested on the not thinking server, Troy thinking server, then if you're really interested, then you won't dismiss this. You'll actually listen and you'll do a bit of research after I've done what, shown what I've shown and you'll find out that what I'm saying is correct. If you don't do the research and you just dismiss it based off of your attitude towards me or your personal feelings towards me or whatever, then that's not on me. Okay? It's nothing to do with me. <clears throat> okay. So this is section one, right? I'll keep it simple, right? Here you have <coughs> here you have um, a box, right? This is something Bev does not understand, right? This green dot here is the observer. This red dot here, let's call it the, the celestial body. <clears throat> right, after the corrections, index correction, height of white correction, blah, 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 are done, right? What you end up with is an angle, right? You end up with an angle that has a perpendicular. So this green line here is the 
uh, observer's zenith, right? That's their zenith, right? The blue line, right, is horizontal sea level, right? Making a perpendicular with their zenith. The purple line is their angle to the celestial body. Now, the angle is 38.65, right? So if you take that from 90, which is your perpendicular, you end up with a zenith angle. This is the angle off of the zenith to the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle here, right? Uh, you end up with a 51.34 um, degree zenith angle. <clears throat> you multiply that by 60. So one second now, right? So that's where is it? It's 51.34 multiplied by 60 equals 3080.4. So that means, right, <clears throat> that between the observer here and this point here, which is the GP point of the celestial body, the geographical position point of the celestial body, that is directly that is directly underneath the celestial body. It, it, there is just over 3080.4 3, nautical miles of horizontal distance between the observer and that GP point. Okay, at that particular time, right? That is what's that is at that particular time from that per, that person's uh, from wherever that person is located. This angle to the celestial body, right? Uh, when subtracted from 90, right, for to get the zenith angle, and the zenith angle is then multiplied by 60 to give them their horizontal adjacent length, right? What that means is that <clears throat> that GP point directly underneath the celestial body, right, is 3080 nautical miles, right, in a horizontal from the observer. So you've just measured, right, especially, right, you're at sea in a boat, you've just measured over 3000 nautical miles of horizontal sea level. Now, if there's land there, Right, this line goes straight through the sea level, uh, um, the zero degrees through the land. So no elevation is taken into account as far as the earth goes. The earth is just treated as a horizontal plane, right, for this. So there's the observer, there's the GP point. The zenith from the GP is this orange line, okay? So the adjacent, which is here, which is so, just over 3,000 nautical miles, right, is this length. This is the zenith from the GP. Right, and the adjacent length determines the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, because the adjacent stops when it gets to the GP point of the celestial body. So the 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 right angle triangle is the adjacent, right? The zenith to, from the GP to the star or celestial body, and the hypotenuse then co connects to both. Now, <clears throat> this is the thing, right? We don't know what height this is. It doesn't matter what height this is. It's because you're using the horizon and sea level, right, to create your 90, you're using the horizon and sea level to create your 90 degrees, right? The height of this celestial body makes no difference to this process. It doesn't need, it doesn't matter if it's 10 miles up in the air or a million miles up in the air. Nobody cares, it doesn't matter. Nobody needs to know the height of that celestial body. All you need to do is get the angle to it and do your height of void corrections to get your horizontal, uh, to get your uh, correct, uh, uh, your correct um, 90 degrees, and then you can uh, subtract your elevation angle from the 90 to give you your zenith angle, to multiply that then for, to give you your, zip, your distance between the observer and the GP point. That's what you do. Now, step two of this <clears throat> is this, this serrated red line. This is this is the zenith from the observer. This is the zenith from the GP point. As you will see, they're both, they're both parallel, right? Both verticals are parallel, right? So you have two zenith, two parallel zeniths. And this here, across here, right, is measured in degrees. So this would be 51.34 degrees. That would be a co-altitude distance, right? It's measured along this horizontal here. Because in celestial navigation, it, the sky is treated as a horizontal plane that's parallel to the earth as a horizontal plane. So two horizontal planes, that's how it's done. This angle here doesn't matter, doesn't matter what height this is at, nobody cares. That has nothing to do, nobody claims a height to the celestial bodies. 
no one's no one in celestial navigation claims a height you don't need to claim a height nobody knows what height they are they're a mystery nobody knows right so the that creates a creates a box so you have the observer zenith you have the zenith from the gp point you have the adjacent between the observer and the gp point then you have the co-altitude distance which is another horizontal between the observer zenith and the uh, zenith um, uh, from the gp to the star so this is your this 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 here this distance along here this angle or distance along there 51.34 degrees becomes 3080.4 nautical miles because there's 3080.4 uh, minutes of degree within that and each minute of degree becomes a nautical mile blah 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 right that gives you a horizontal adjacent length right your horizontal adjacent length right along with your your opposite which is your zenith from the gp then is connected by your hypotenuse the length of the hypotenuse doesn't matter none of that matters the length of the opposite the length of the hypotenuse doesn't matter all that matters is this angle and this angle right that you need to get this distance and what are you going to do then? You're going to use this distance here between the observer and the GP point, right? And you're going to, right, use that as the radius for a circle. So if this was 3080.4, right, <clears throat> nautical miles, you're then going to go, right, you multiply that, right, sorry, multiply that by 2, right, to give you a diameter of 6160.8 nautical miles. Then you will multiply that again by 3. 0.14 right to get this right which is 19,344.912 that gives you uh, right that means that that is the circumference of the circle a horizontal right presumed to be horizontal two-dimensional circle that you've just measured on basically sea the sea level of earth and as i said you might measure true land masses but you're measuring true at that zero degrees so there's no elevations. It's just treated as one horizontal, one flat baseline, right? So you've just measured 19,000, uh, 19,344.912 circumference of a horizontal two-dimensional circle. That's what, you, what you've just done. Then you do that whole process two more times, and where those three circles intersect, that will be right your location. But all that other stuff doesn't matter, right? What matters, right? It doesn't matter about whether you are using the almanac or whatever, right? What matters is that you're able to measure these horizontal massive and these circular, massive circular distances, right? Using zero degrees elevation, right? That's what you do. Now, never mind the ballers and any other nonsense they want to come in with. That was all added into celestial, into the celestial, into celestial navigation in the 1800s. Before a certain point in the 1800s, there was no globe involved in celestial navigation. Right? Everything was horizontal. So people should do their history, uh, do some history on that. So they, never mind what they say about the nautical almanac. The nautical, nautical almanac is just an almanac of the stars. It doesn't claim a shape to anything. The ballers like to claim it, it claims a shape to something. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's purely about, it's purely data on where, what star will be at what time, or what celestial body the sun or the moon will be at what time, at what geographical position, what coordinates on the earth that celestial body is sitting at at that exact time. That's what, uh, sitting over, I should say, at that exact time. That's what it is, right? You don't need to concern yourself with the internal angles of this right angle triangle. You don't need to concern yourself with the lengths of the sides, only the length of the adjacent. That's the only thing you need to concern yourself with. Because it's only the co-altitude distance that gives you your adjacent, right, or what's known as your zenith distance along there. So your co-altitude distance, which is measured in degrees, gives you your zenith distance, which is measured in nautical miles. So co-altitude across the sky in a horizontal gives you a co-altitude distance in a horizontal along the earth. That's what the process is. The only thing that matters is this, right? Without this, none of it works. They need a horizontal baseline, and this is how they do it. What the celestial bodies are, where they are, doesn't matter. Nobody actually knows. Now, let me throw something else at you that's going to completely warp your minds that you won't believe, but this is a fact. See this exact angle, right? <clears throat> if, if, right, there's an airplane flying above this observer, right? And that airplane is six miles up in the sky above the, this observer. 
And that airplane is not using a nautical sex, uh, a marine sextant because obviously they're not going to use the horizon. Although they can use it, but they have their own bubble sextant, which creates a horizontal, right, with the bubble, right? The bubble level creates a horizontal bubble sextants, right? Proving that horizontal and level are the same thing once again, right? Because the horizontal they're going to be creating is going to be of a massive distance. If they are, if that person is in an airplane six miles above this, this person is in a boat, right? And they take an angle at that exact same time to the exact same celestial body, right? Once they're at the exact zenith of this observer, once they're at the zenith of this observer, right? Their angle to the, to the celestial body will also be 38.65. The angle doesn't change with altitude. So if both a, a mariner and a pilot takes an angle to the same celestial body at the same exact time and are both at each other in, in line with each other's zeniths, right, or nadars, right, then their angle will be exactly the same. Both of them will get 38.65. There is something that you won't be able to work out in your heads with geometry because it's the celestial bodies we're dealing with. They are magical. I'm not going to lie. There is something magical about them. There are things that they do that make no logical geometric sense, but they do. That's that. I can't tell you what they are. I only know that they work. It works. So to give an example of this, <clears throat> a boat that's on the at the equator, right, that measures an angle to Polaris, will see Polaris at zero degrees almost just at their horizon, right? So the person at the equator in the boat measures an angle to Polaris and they see Polaris at the horizon, right? A person flying in an airplane over the equator using a, a bubble sextant who takes an angle to Polaris will also get zero degrees. Now, they're both over the equator. They're both on, uh, at the equator, but the person in the plane is six miles above the person in the boat. So at any time that a person in an airplane with a bubble sextant measures an angle to Polaris, at any time, they will get zero degrees. It's exactly the same for the person in the boat they will get zero degrees. That because you're measuring perspective. Now, why both of them can get the same angle, no matter where they are, the same angle to the same celestial body, as long as they're both over the same GP point, the same uh, position on Earth, right, at the same time, right, why they can both get the exact same angle, yet one of them is six miles above the other, I do not know. Nobody knows what that, how that happens. Nobody knows. But that is what happens now you can't make geometric sense out of that because that is something beyond earthly geometry all we know is that that happens that's all we know that that is a fact of celestial navigation that's going to blow your minds and you won't believe it but i am i implore you to investigate it it is true now <clears throat> that's all i'm going to say about that now i'm going to go on to the black swan this was shown on Bev's, Bev's Try Thinking show on YouTube. <clears throat> this is something that is not understood. Okay, quick sup of water, one second. This is the Modus Tollens, right, from Quantum Eraser. Now, <clears throat> it's an FP then Q, right, Modus Tollens. <clears throat> so, if the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, uh, then the horizon distance measurements must be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height and feet, Q. So if P, then Q, right? Not Q, the horizon distance is greater than 9.41 miles, therefore not P, right? <clears throat> now, I don't know what that 9.41 miles is about, right? <clears throat> but uh, the point is that uh, it says then at the end, Earth is not a sphere. Now, what people over on the Troy Thinking server were jumping on, even though they were given the answer to this earlier earlier yesterday, they were jumping on this last night from when I make this video. Right, so you be, from whenever this date of this video comes out, go back two days and you will get to um, Nathan's, uh, them people on front of Troy Thinking server being on Nathan's, and you will get their show that night. They were corrected on this. I corrected them. Uh, um, um, they were corrected on this um, throughout the show. Right, um, they didn't really seem to understand it. <clears throat> right, what they're sta stating is that that if P, the Earth is a globe with a radius of three nine um, three nine five nine miles, uh, then Q, the horizon can be no more than one point two two five times the square root of the observer's height and feet. Right, 
uh, not Q, right? The horizon uh, distance is greater than whatever uh, the observer. So let's say if it's a one foot observer height, then the horizon is shown to be greater than uh, 1.23 miles, whatever, right? Excuse me. And uh, so not P, the Earth is not a sphere, right? But they're jumping on the fact that the 3959 is put in after that. They think there's something stupid going on with quantum arrays here, that he can't understand modus tollens. Or, and they think that, uh, or they think that he's just being deceptive. No, if you understood the 3959, you would understand that that is the only number, that is the only thing that needs to be debunked, right? Him not writing it in here doesn't matter, because in the original Black Swan, right, you go back a couple of years, and his first couple of presentations, he always had the 3959 in, right? But it doesn't need to be in there. It doesn't change anything, and I'll explain why. If you understand where the radius came from, then you will know that the 3959 doesn't have to be uh, in here. Wait one second now. <clears throat> okay. Okay, <clears throat> so 21,000... Right, sorry, uh, let me see. What will I do with this? Uh, I will probably do it in miles. <clears throat> let me see. No, I won't, sorry. 21,600, right? That's, right, uh, divided by two, right? 10,800 nautical miles. That's the length of one longitude look. One longitude line, right? So every longitude line has a distance along it of 10,800 nautical miles, right? Now, if you uh, pay attention to the to the ballers when they speak about uh, um, great circle routes, right? What they're talking about are, are mainly longitudinal distances. Every longitude line is half of a great circle route, right? So <clears throat> the reason it's half of a great circle route is because Basically, the, the basics, of, basics of it is the latitude and longitude grid comes from right, celestial navigation elevation angles to Polaris. That's where it starts. That's where they got they got their... It's all measured horizontal, horizontally. The whole thing is measured in a horizontal fashion along a horizontal plane. With air presumed to be a horizontal plane. That's where they get the latitude positions and the length of the longitude lines. Right. That's where it all comes from. Right. But let's just work in globe world for a second. What they did is they took one longitude line like this, right? And they took the corresponding one, right? Right? Which would give them a so if we multiply this, right? Multiply by two, right? That would give them twenty one thousand six hundred. Right? So that means they have a twenty one thousand right, they take two and they bend them around to touch, right? So they're bending them around so they meet. So both ends at the north and south of their globe meet. Right, so they have a twenty-one thousand six hundred nautical mile right circle. Every circle has twenty-one thousand six hundred minutes of degree in it. Every single circle ever. And what do they do? Right, <clears throat> they divide this by three point one four, right, which gives them that. And then they divide that right, which would be their diameter then by two, which gives them that. Now, right. That's 3,400, right, and let's just say almost 40, right? 3,440, it's just almost 3,440. That's a 3,440 nautical mile radius, right? Now, there's no such thing as that with as far as a sphere goes, right? That's not how nautical miles work. But the, besides that, this is, this is their radius, right? So what did they do? They do, there's a conversion, right? So let's, um, here we go, for length. So nautical miles to miles convert 3958.094915. That's the globe earth's radius. That's where it came from. The back engineering of flat earth elevation angles to Polaris. Right? It can't be any bigger and it can't be any smaller than that. It can't be a mile or two bigger or a mile or two smaller. And the reason is, is that because all the observations that has taken to the sky, all the astronomical observations of Polaris and all the other celestial bodies, right, including the sun, everything they're taking observations and angles to, right, because they need to use a flat plane to do all that stuff, right, to get all, to back engineer it into a globe, right, what happens is this, they can end up with a radius, right, a fraudulent radius, never measured, this is just a value, of 3958.09, and they round it off at 3959. That's what they do. So 3959, right, is here is actually 3958 point whatever, right, point 09, blah, blah, blah. That's what it actually is, right? So 
That's why you don't need to add in 395 line down here because their globe can't have a radius even slightly bigger or slightly smaller, not even by a mile or two. It has to be exactly what it is. Their, their, whole, their whole claim about an oblate spheroid has nothing to do with their geometry. The oblate spheroid is a claim that's based on their rotation and centrifugal force causing their equator to bulge out. But that's complete and utter nonsense because they'll also claim that the equator on their globe has 21,600, is, is exactly 21,600 nautical miles in circumference. That's what they'll claim, right? So, uh, and they also, which would mean that it's exactly the same as two longitude lines going north to south on their globe. They can't have a radius bigger than 3959. They can't have one smaller than 3959. It has to be exactly 3959. So anything that's debunking 3959, which was be the one, which would be anything that's no more than 1.225, the square root of the observer's height in feet, anything that's debunking that is debunking the whole the whole claim of the Earth being a sphere. So when people on the Troy Thinking server were jumping on this, they didn't understand this, even though this was I attempted. I don't think I was the only person to, to try to explain this to them uh, when they were on Nathan's. They didn't want to know. There's no need to put 3959 in down here, because once you debunked 3959, right, that is debunked by this, that's the end of that. There is no globe after that. That's the whole point of the Black Swan. Now, as I said, the original Black Swan uh, arguments had 3959 in down here. It didn't just have Earth is not a sphere. But you don't need to have it in, because it's debunked. Right, because that is the radius that can't change. So once you debunk that, it's over. The whole lot is debunked. You don't need to add in three nine five nine down here. It is not necessary to do so. If you understood where the radius came from and what it is, and how how it was back engineered from flat out celestial navigation elevation angles to Polaris. Right, if you understood where the radius came from, where the back engineering came from. I've even made videos, there's a 40 minute video on my channel about it. If you understood that, then you wouldn't be jumping on Quantum Marais or saying he doesn't understand modus tollens. Because that's just crazy. Mo I don't know how many people in this whole arena would have even known about modus tollens and modus ponens if it wasn't for QE. So you have that wrong as well. So not only do you have it wrong concerning celestial navigation, you think we're crazy to say what we say when it's just us relaying information from celestial navigation. But no, you'd rather listen to the ballers and listen to nonsense nonsense they tell you about celestial navigation and about them having an expanding radius. That's a load of nonsense. There's no expand. You can't have an expanding, a, a variable radius. You can't have that. A radius is a set thing. It's a measurement. They don't have any radius. They have a value. And that's why they mathematically change it around with 7 over 6R and greater than 7 over 6R, which is just extensions of the radius. An extension in the size of their globe as they need it, right? It's not really it's not refraction. It's just a calculation that they change around as they need to. They never ever uh, uh, adhere to a three nine five nine radius. They don't do that. They always have a four six one eight radius because they always say there's always at least seven over six all present at least, which brings us back to the black swan, which means that they're claiming that the ray that their horizon is refracted which means it's not geometric, it's not matching 3959, no one can measure 3959, it's complete and utter nonsense, it means it's Earth is not a sphere, don't need to put in 3959 after that, no need for that when you understand it. Now if you don't understand it after this, I don't know what to do, right, you're wrong on both counts, celestial navigation and this, you're wrong, it's time to show some humility, that's what it's time for, try thinking solver, some humility. Because you're wrong, totally wrong. You just don't do research, you don't learn. You just think other people are crazy, or other people do stupid things, or saying things for nothing. That's not the case. You're getting your stuff wrong, and you're misrepresenting us. And that's what's, that's what's bothering us. And that's why I'm making this stupid video. You should know that. You should know this. But no, you're all experts in everything. Instead of learning this, this is such a simple thing, it's just learning it. But no, out of out of a hatred for Nathan, flat earth debates and QE and whatever else, you decide to not want to know about any of this stuff. And then you go and get it wrong when you're talking about it publicly. You're wrong. That's the end of that. You're just wrong. Now, third and final section. <clears throat> this, right? Is the earth flat? Question mark. What is flat? Question mark. Flat is not is not a shape. 
flat is a description, an aspect. In geometry, a flat does not exist. Only the use of the word exists as a way of describing. So to say the earth is flat is not a geometric claim. Now, I will explain this because I have no doubt that they're all going to be shouting, oh, it's a two, you're claiming two dimensions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, as if I wouldn't know what flat is. If I take a piece of paper, now I made this, uh, I made this uh, analogy about a table ages ago and I've heard Brenda use it on, on uh, Bev's, right? Let's say I take a piece of paper right and i describe it to someone as flat that piece of paper is flat right people go okay it is it's flat right but if you put that underneath a microscope you will see undulations it won't be flat underneath a microscope it will have undulations and babe's answer to that is yeah because everything's three-dimensional grand but flat right is not a real thing it's a description an aspect if you were to talk about a triangle right you could say a triangle is flat a circle is flat a square is flat but a flat is not a shape so when i say the earth is flat right if i say claim the earth is a globe right or a sphere i'm claiming it is a solid geometric shape right that's what a sphere is in geometry it's called a solid shape right so if i claim the earth is a sphere i'm claiming it's a, it's a shape if i claim it's a circle it's a shape if I'm claiming it's a triangle or a square, it's a shape. But if I just say it's the earth is flat or the earth is, has a horizontal baseline, whatever, then I'm not making, especially if I say it's, a, it's flat, I'm not making a geometric claim. I'm actually claiming that it is without shape because flat there is no sh shape of flat. It doesn't exist. The shape of flat does not exist. So I can't be claiming a shape or anything else to the earth if I'm claiming it's flat. The same way as if I if I describe the earth as flat, then that's a description of the earth, right? It's an it's, it's basically talking about an aspect, right, to the earth. Now, mostly the flat is used as an aspect to a shape. You could say a triangle is the aspect of the triangle of the triangle is flat, right? But the thing about it is, is that's still just a description. So if I take a piece of paper and I tell, say to someone that's flat. Most people are not going to disagree with that, right? Because it's just a description. But if I put it on a microscope, obviously, it's not going to be flat. There's going to be undulations. But the undulations are so small, they're at the microscopic level, that it doesn't matter. It's just a description of what I'm seeing or a description of the whole of the piece of paper. Now, if we're talking about the earth, right? <clears throat> One second now. Right, go in here a sec. And just come out from this. I have something else there. Right. Now, let's say if we're talking about the earth, right? Um, I'll just come out a second, give it a time. I've got something here underneath. Just have it zoomed out. Right. Now, if we just use the latitude and longitude grid. Now, the latitude and longitude grid is a circle, but I don't know if that's where the, if, where the world stops, right? I just know that that grid is a circle with 90 degrees from the north geographic point to uh the equator and another 90 degrees out the south right so that's 180 degrees right now <clears throat> this is this is a representation of the whole area of the latitude and longitude grid as i said i'm not claiming the latitude and long i'm not claiming the earth is a circle i'm just saying using just the, the area that's within the latitude and longitude grid right as you can see there is 485 million 235,271 right um uh, a square or centimeters whatever it is in here right <clears throat> um one second now i'm just going to show something here uh, right so four eight right four eight uh five 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 two three five two three five uh two seven one right now right i'm going to divide that just to show right? i'm going to divide that whole area that's 485 million 235,271. I'm going to divide it by 5.4, right? Divide it by 5.4 equals that, right? That's how many times, right? 5.4, right? We'll go into that. 89,858,383.5. That's 89,858,383.5 times 
4, 5.4 goes into that last goes into um, 485 200 million 235,271 what is 5.4 5.4 is the highest point is the, the, the top of Mount Everest it's the highest point that we know of right in our world so if we just use just the area the surface area of the latitude and longitude grid right as it's naturally should be which is as a flat grid right we just use just the surface area within that and we then divide that by the elevation or, or the, the elevation of mount everest which is 5.4 miles that's its height 5.4 miles the highest point that we know of in the whole world that we, in the world we know of right that, that that goes into that over almost 90 million times and you want me to bev wants me and other people to stop referring and describing the earth as flat because there's mountains hills and valleys those little tiny undulations you see when you look at the piece of paper on a microscope we're living within those little undulations yeah so when i look at the door and see a hill yeah that's a hill but that hill is such a nothing when you're talking about the earth we're not talking about a hill or a mountain or a valley or three hills mountains or valleys we're talking about the earth as a whole so if i say the earth is flat i'm not making a geometric claim about it i'm describing the whole earth the earth as a whole i'm not making a geometric claim flat is not a shape i don't care if it's two-dimensional flat is not a shape because you can claim that a piece of paper is two-dimensional because you can actually use a pen and draw two-dimensional things on it. But when you go in with a microscope, it will be shown to be three-dimensional at the, at the microscopic level. So would you not say that dividing the height of Mount Everest into the surface area within the latitude and longitude grid would not make Mount Everest the highest point we know of on the, in the known world? Would not make Mount Everest one of those little tiny in undulations? So why would I want to go around trying to force people or get people to start saying you can't say the earth is flat because mount everest exists when mount everest can divide into that almost 90 million times why would i do that why would i do that that makes no logical sense it's totally fine to describe the earth as flat because flat is not a shape when you say the earth is flat you're saying the earth is right the earth is shapeless Right, that's the end of that. You look at a map that has, see this grid? You look at a map that has this grid, right? A grid like that on it, right? A grid reference, two dimensional grid reference. There's two dimensional uh, Cartesian reference, right? That map, right, with that grid on it, whether it be paper or on a screen here, right? Neither the map nor the screen will be 100% smooth. It won't be, it can be described as flat. You'll describe the map as flat. You'll describe the screen as flat, but under a microscope, right? under microscope uh, at microscopic level they won't be flat so you can't even talk about a two-dimensional coordinate system because the only place you're going to see them is going to be on a map or on a screen a map on a screen or a map on a piece of paper so it's absolute nonsense that bev is jumping on such such idiotic things it's stupid i don't see the point but he wants to jump on that and attack people basically he wants people to feel bad about calling their flat when they're correct to call it flat because you're not making a geometric claim so if he comes at you with a geometric claim because you claim it's flat then he's wrong it's flat is not a geometric name flat is not a shape there's no such thing as a ah, flat it does not exist right what does exist is x uh, xy right xy cartesian coordinates on maps maps made of paper right that can be described as flat and on screens they can be described as flat but on a microscope they won't be right would you think one of those little undulations on that piece of paper would multiply into that piece of paper almost 90 million into the surface area of that paper almost 90 million times probably you know and that's the highest point we have on the earth so there's the third thing the bev is wrong to attack right so three things are wrong about uh try thinking it's over number one uh, the celestial navigation you're wrong about that you don't understand that but you don't get this right this celestial navigation you have to do more research and stop trying to attack it and try to try to say it doesn't work geometrically when they use it exactly what i showed is what they use right the the, the, the celestial bodies aren't geometric we don't know what they are they don't behave geometrically like we understand terrestrially 
you don't do that. You don't solve for the internal for the internals of the right angle, but there is a right angle triangle for a for a right angle triangle, but there is a right angle triangle, right? There's there's still a right angle triangle involved. It's still you're still making a right angle triangle, but you're not solving for the internals. Secondly, the, uh, the black swan, the modus tollens, you're wrong about that. You don't understand why well, you don't need to put in 3959. Because the radius can't be any more or less than 3959, because it's a back engineering of flat earth elevation angle measurements to Polaris. So that's the second thing you're wrong about. And you're wrong to attack people on this. Because this proves it. What? M Mount Everest, right? 5.4 miles high. Does that mean that so when it, so does that mean that we should pay attention to Mount Everest instead of paying attention to this monstrous area of land and sea? This monstrous monstrous terrain. We we should pay attention to a hill or a valley. No, we're speaking about it. Uh, it's no shape. It's flat. It doesn't have a shape. It's a massive plane. That's what it is. You can call it. You can say, "Oh, you're speaking about it in two dimensions." Yeah, you, right. Because we're talking about it as a whole. We're talking about the news, the piece of paper as a whole. We're not talking about when we're living between two undulations on that piece of paper. So that's another thing you're wrong about. You're wrong about all three of these things. Now this video has gone on long enough. <clears throat> I shouldn't have to ever make another, another video on this, but I felt I needed to do this because it's such nonsense dealing with the try thinking server, as I call them, the not thinking server. Hopefully after this, right, some of them will actually do a bit more research instead of looking for me or other people to explain stuff to them that I've already tried to explain to them. Like, it's not as if we're hiding the knowledge or it's not real. It's straight from celestial navigation. So, you know, we're not hiding the things about the modus tollens. All you have to do is ask about that. You don't, you just say, why didn't you do that? All you do is ask. Someone will tell you. You don't have to come in. You don't have to be attacking us from your server or from your YouTube channel. That's not necessary. Just ask. We're not a crowd of animals. We'll give you an answer. Simple. Thanks for watching.